We're currently about halfway through the year, so I thought it'd be a good time to kind of just chat and catch up and do a little update. So starting with the fun things first, I thought we could talk about some iPad accessories that I've been using. So the one question that I get asked a lot is how you can improve your writing and the overall writing experience on the iPad since it is a very slippery glass screen. And by far the best way to do that is to use a matte screen protector like I have on here. Now, there's quite a bit of them on the market. Um, the name, the big name brand being Paperlike. And I've tried pretty much most of them and they're pretty similar. Um, the one issue I have with them is they do make your screen a little bit fuzzy. It does kind of reduce the resolution of your screen. And for me, that's an issue because I design graphics for the iPad. So when I have my iPad, I need to make sure everything is pixel perfect. And I can't do that with a matte screen protector. So I came across something. This is from the brand Astropad. They've been around for a while. And this is the rock paper pencil. And it's actually two things. It's a removable magnetic screen protector. And then it also comes with pencil tips to use. Now, this really intrigued me because I could use it, enjoy the enhanced writing experience on it. But then if I ever need to get a good look at the graphics, I can remove it and then put it back on and I'm not wasting a whole screen. So it is a little pricey. I mean, they're a good company, so I kind of feel like it's worth supporting them in that way. But if you are looking for something a little more budget friendly, there are some, one, some removable matte screen protectors that you can get from Amazon. There's actually someone in the community who recommended one that I tried. And so I got that one as well. So that's the one I have here. Now, the only thing about this one is it's supposed to be magnetic and it had me remove stickies. Like it's, I can't tell if it's magnetic or if it's stuck on there, like with something sticky. Either way, you can pop it off. Okay, maybe it is a little magnetic. And then the only thing with this one is the, the edging is raised a little bit. But either way, that's a good option if you would like to try a matte screen protector, but you don't want to fully commit to having it on your iPad at all times. The next thing that I've been using, which is, it's kind of fun. I think it's designed for uh, illustrators, people who create art with their iPad. And it's actually this, this big guy here. It is called the dark board. And it's basically a big foam case, I guess, for your iPad. So you have it. And so the idea is that you have more surface area to kind of rest your arm and then it also lands on a stand here. Now I will say this does feel a lot more ergonomic when you're using your iPad. I know when I'm planning or looking down at my screen for a while I can start to get some neck pain. So this helps a lot. It puts it at a much more comfortable angle. Uh, this itself is pricey too but like I said if if you want to you know, invest in a good company or if you're a full-time illustrator or something like that, this is definitely something that you would probably want to consider. Another thing you can do if you don't want to have a screen protector on your iPad is to change your tips. Now, I haven't tried too many different tips yet, but there was one, it's a very <laughs> fine point tip that I tried someone recommended. I just found that it was, it made my handwriting a little bit worse. So I'm gonna keep searching for that. Now moving on to note apps. I mentioned over in the Dash Planner community that I started using the Note Shelf 3 app as my main app for using the Dash Planner in. And there's quite a few people who were just kind of picking my brain about what I thought about the app. So a little update on that. I, I really like it. It's, if you're someone who uses a lot of digital stickers, it's lacking a little bit of support in that aspect. Like if you're used to Good Notes, they have the Elements tool, which makes it super easy to save all your commonly used stickers. There, doesn't, there isn't that feature in Note Shelf. But the one thing for me is the UI. So I, when I'm planning specifically, I don't like to have a big bulky toolbar taking up screen space. 
And so the cool thing about Note Shelf is the UI is very minimal, but then you can also go into, I think they call it focus mode, and it hides everything. And you can still write and click your links while in that mode. So it's super immersive. I love it. It's just distraction free. And when I'm planning, I'm, you know, I just see the planner and nothing else. So that's kind of my big thing when it comes to choosing your, your note app that you use. Each one has kind of, you know, their pros and cons. And it just comes down to your personal preference of what matters to you and what doesn't bother you too much. If you're interested in a video of me reviewing the different Note apps, I, that's something I've been thinking about doing for a while. So if that's something you'd like to see, just let me know. But so far, I'm pretty happy with it. I think I'm going to stick with it definitely for the rest of the year. And it might be my Note app that I use for 2025 as well. Now, diving more into digital planning hacks that I've been using lately. I don't know why it took me so long to realize this, but you can open the same notebook, so your planner document, and have it in two different windows and be using two different pages at the same time. I just discovered it. So you could do this with any note app. So specifically, I'm gonna use Note Shelf, but once you have your, your planner or any document open, you'll just swipe up to reveal your, your doc, I think it is, and then you will just tap once on the Note app that is already open, and it'll show the window that's currently open and then an option of a new window. So you will tap that and it'll just basically open the app in a new window. So then you just tap to open your planner again. And then now when you tap on the app one more time, it'll show that you have two windows open. So you will just drag that second one over to the side. And so now you have your planner in two separate windows. Now what I've been using this for is for referencing my month on one side and then my week on another. And this helps me to be able to reference all the stuff I have planned for the month while I'm doing my weekly planning. And you could do this by having your week on one side and your daily page on the other. It's also nice to be able to go and review your goals, your projects, any other part of the planner and be able to reference one side and fill it out on the other. I hope that makes sense. I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out that that was a thing that you could do in any app, but it is something that has been a huge little productivity hack that I've been using. Because we are halfway through the year, I like to take this time to kind of do a mid-year check-in to see how I'm doing with my goals, projects, stuff like that. So I'm gonna take this time before I start planning for the month of July to go ahead and pull up my goal dashboard and just kind of see the goals that I set out to do in the beginning of the year. So I did put a video out on that. So if you saw that, this is me kind of revisiting what I have written. Um, now, one thing I know hasn't been working too well, and that was my goal to put out one video per month. I started really strong in the beginning of the year, but I just, I underestimated how much time and effort goes into filming, editing, doing all that on your own while also running a business, doing the administrative side, the customer service, the product development, testing, all of that. And I only have a limited amount of time that I actually get to work every day. So I think if that's something that I'm going to want to pursue, I'm going to have to outsource help if that's with editing or filming, something like that. So. That's just me checking in and seeing, you know, if something's not working, what exactly can I do to make that goal a little bit more attainable? You know, and sometimes you realize halfway that things that we wanted in the beginning of the year don't matter too much halfway through, you know, like it was a good intention, but it's just not aligning with our life at the time. And that's okay. So this is a good time to, you could either choose to Keep that goal on there as a reminder or you could just because this is a digital planner you could just erase that goal and put in something else that you find important now moving forward another thing i'm going to do as part of my mid-year check-in is i'm going to go ahead and open my 2024 pre-planner that's a free workbook that i put out back in the beginning of the year and the last page of that workbook is a 24 for 24 2024 list so it's 24 items 
that you would like to do or accomplish within a year. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I haven't looked at this in a little bit, so I'm gonna go and look through and see if there's any of these things that I did accomplish and if there's still anything that I haven't done and I know, oh, that's still really important to me, I'll go ahead and take this time to pick a time, the, remaining, the remainder of the year, to go ahead and make that thing happen. Now, before I jump into my monthly planning, I wanted to show you something else that I've been using lately. And what I did was I took the blank note paper page copied it and pasted it right here, right after my cover. And what I've been using this page for is kind of like a brain dump for all those random tasks that have just been filling up my head. And so what I'll do is whenever I, something pops up in my head, I will write it here in this little box that I have drawn out. And then next to it, I have these little buckets of time, I guess they are. So one says now slash this week. There's this week, next week, in a few weeks, sometime soonish, and eventually. So once I have written out that random thought, I can go ahead and decide when exactly I need to do that. So a lot of things that I have to deal with don't really have a specific time, just kind of more of a general time that I should get it done or would like to get it done. So once I have stuff written down and it's super easy to just move it over and decide that's something I need to do now. Can it wait a few weeks or is it something I can put off eventually? So this has been super helpful for me to not feel like I have all those random tasks just filling up the space in my head. So moving on to my monthly planning for the month of July, I'm going to pull up the monthly calendar now I haven't started filling this out yet, but there are a few random things that I have added a couple weeks ago, but I'm gonna head over to the July overview page and I'm gonna start by filling this out first. And this just helps me to kind of start brainstorming about all the different things that are going on that month. And then also certain things that I wanna make sure I do as well. And what I like to do is reference the month before. So I'll just hop over to the June overview and so that I don't have to start from scratch, I'm gonna copy this and paste it on the next month's page. And then I can go and edit from here. Like my focus, I think I'll keep that same focus, just focusing on the summer and kind of getting my creativity back before I start working on the new planner for next year. And I'm just gonna go through and kind of see what things I wanna keep and then what things that I want to change. So now that I filled out this page, I kept most of the stuff the same from the previous month. I just did a reflection on what I need to do in terms of work. And now that it's July, I need to start working on the 2025 planners. It takes me about three months to put out the new yearly planner. And so I use the first month to usually put out a survey and do research and an audit of the current planner. And Kind of just make notes about what I want to keep, what I want to change, stuff like that. So that's what we're focusing on this month. And then for home, uh, if you saw in my earlier videos, something I'm focusing on this year is doing little projects around the house. And so here is where I decide what projects I'm going to focus on that month. And then I'll go ahead and I will break down what steps I want to do specifically to work on that project. So I have that there. I kept most of these the same from last month. 
just changing up where I felt like it needed a little bit of change. And so once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and move over to the calendar. I normally don't decorate my spreads too much, but I kind of feel kind of in the mood to do so. So I think we're going to go ahead and put down some kind of 4th of July Americana inspired stickers. So I did put a, a sticker set out last year around this time called the Stars and Stripes sticker set. So I think I'm going to play around with that. So I've turned my iPad so I can go ahead and have a second window open. Now I am using note shelf, but most stickers books are made for good notes. So I'm going to go ahead and hop over to good notes and locate that sticker book. And this is helpful if you are thinking about changing up your app, but you have so many sticker books in good notes. This is a little tip that someone shared with me and it is super helpful. So here is that stars and stripes sticker book. Now I'm going to go ahead and open note shelf in this side. And what you can do is copy and paste stickers from good notes and paste them into note shelf. So I think I'm going to take these fireworks, copy them, then over my planner and note shelf, you can just paste them in. And I kind of like this because it, I have so many of those sticker books and good notes and I don't have to worry about taking space on this app as well. I love this cute little banner. So I think I'm going to put it down here. Now, for July, we don't have too many exciting things going on. Uh, it's, we're coming up on the one year of moving into our new house. And so we have a bunch of repairs that are still covered by the warranty. So this month is going to be a lot of taking care of that. Our microwave went out and they came out already, but they're missing a part. And so he has to come back again. So like I said, a lot of not so fun stuff. All right, I take that back. We do have our wedding anniversary this month. <laughs> So I think we're going to try and go out of town. We'll see. It's always a little bit challenging when you have a toddler. I don't know. How do you spell anniversary? <laughs> uh, convert to Ted. Is that right? I guess it is. It didn't look right. Okay. <laughs> so if you ever want to move stuff on top of a sticker, you can just toggle under your lasso setting. So I'll just toggle off photo. So that way I can move this around. Like I said, I don't decorate too much. So this is a little foreign to me, but it's fun. Mixes it up a little bit. All right, I think I'm going to stop there and start filling out the rest of the month with the important stuff. So I'll just go ahead and hide that for now. So for work stuff, what I like to do is 
assign something, a task for the whole week, basically. So I've been using just a text box in the highlighter tool to kind of designate what I'm working on each week. So you'll see the past month, something that I do consistently. And so I don't have to start from scratch. I'm just going to copy this over to this page. Now I'm gonna go back and reference my overview page. I'm just gonna copy the stuff I've written. And just use this blank space here. So I have my work. I don't think I'm gonna have space for this. We'll put you up here for now. I have my work stuff in my home projects. I'm gonna go ahead and move these tasks over here. I know I already have these written out on the overview page, but I kind of just like to fill this blank space with them so I can see them at a glance. And these are just little headers that I created. I think I had this in my last plan with me video. Paste those in. So here's a little trick you can use if you want to make your own color changing stickers. You can find stickers that are just an outline like this. This is the sticker set that's included with the dash planner. I'm going to go ahead and copy this one. Paste it in. So I'm just going to use the highlighter to color in this shape. And then resize it. And now it's cool as you can select it and then change the color. Do the same thing with this little briefcase icon. So now I'm going to use that hack that I shared earlier and open a second window of the planner. open that in the second screen. So I have my month on this side. And I'm going to do this so that I can actually reference my year. So the year overview. And this is just to see so I can reference what I have written for my yearly overview. Fourth of July.
And I'm gonna go back to that brain dump page to see what I can start jotting down in my monthly overview. So let's see. I'm gonna start picking some dates. So Saturdays for me are days when my husband takes my daughter to go do something and I get about an hour or two of time to work on a big home project or just something that's easier to do when there's not a toddler running around. So Saturdays are my days to do that. So I'm gonna start kind of jotting out some of these tasks that I have in my brain dump. So I have quite a few things kind of jotted out on this monthly page. And now I'm just gonna go through and figure out those tasks for work, those work tasks each week. And what's nice about making these text boxes is these are just kind of general ideas of what I'm gonna work on, but that I can go ahead and easily update these if anything changes. So I think that is good for now. It's a pretty good place to start. And this will fill up more as the month goes on, but I feel a lot more prepared for my month moving forward. So I hope you found this video helpful. If there's any other videos that you would like to see, please don't hesitate to let me know and I'll see you next time. Happy planning.